All right, this time we're going to talk about Aristotle's three souls. As you remember from Plato, he has a three-part soul, and Plato's three-part soul is reason, thumos, or spirit, and appetite. Well, Aristotle actually has three separate souls, and because of that, he looks at soul as the animating influence of all things. So if something moves, for Aristotle, it's going to have a soul. Now, there's problems such as magnets and lodestones, which are weird sort of inanimate things that have, might have some partial soul, but that's not all that important. What's important is anything that's alive is going to have some sort of a soul. So the lowest level of soul, and that's the soul that all things share, is called a vegetative soul. And this is a part of the irrational soul. There's two parts of the irrational soul and two parts of the rational soul. So the most primitive part of every living thing is the vegetative soul. And the vegetative soul simply means the ability to absorb nutrients. Lettuce has a vegetative soul, is a vegetable. Um, and oddly enough, this is where you might hear the term of um, persistent vegetative state. It's the idea that a human being is like a vegetable, they only can absorb nutrients. Well, the next level of soul is the sensible soul, and this is the animal soul. This is the soul that can move around and reproduce and can pursue things and so forth. So the sensible soul has a different series of drives. The vegetative soul, to be virtuous, is supposed to simply absorb nutrients. This, the uh, sensible soul to be virtuous, which means it does what it's supposed to do, it fulfills its potentiality, it actualizes potentiality. The sensible soul has the capacity of concupiscence, the desire to reproduce, and irascibility, the desire to get angry. And the idea of the sensible soul is you have to be able to control that part of you. So it's sort of like Plato's Thumos, but he's going to say dogs have irascible, irascible souls and concupiscent souls. All animals have both a vegetative soul and a sensible soul. But then you get to the uniquely human soul. Only people have this soul, and that's the reasonable soul. And this is where we enter to the rational soul. So the two souls I've mentioned, the vegetative and the sensible, are irrational, whereas the reasonable soul is rational. And this is where Aristotle's sexism comes in. He actually says that women are not able to think rationally about abstract universals, which means women can't do philosophy. That's why women hate this class, ha ha ha. Um, he also says that's why this is where we've come up with the idea that women are bad at mathematics. He says the domain of abstract reasoning is the man. On the other hand, women's goal, role is to deal with practical reasoning. Women are more practically minded, and this is the realm of ethics. Ethics means practical reasoning, how to determine the right thing to do after years of practice. Character is practical reasoning. So abstract reasoning is something that's purely intellectual and masculine. Practical reasoning is something which is both masculine and feminine. And this is how Aristotle gets into trouble. He will then say certain kinds of people have different kinds of souls, and dependent upon the kind of soul you're born with, that should determine the kind of job that you have and so forth. So it's not the metals of Plato, but there's still the idea that some people are inferior to other people. And for him, it cuts along lines of sex and race. Now, the question that I always ask people is, was Aristotle then a sexist or a racist? And the answer is actually no. And the reason it's no is not because he didn't say terrible things about various people, women are inferior, inferior to men. It's because the way he came to that conclusion was by observing the world, and he makes the classic mistake, which is actually named after him, it's called the naturalistic fallacy. He says that just because things are some way, that's the way they ought to be. So there you have Aristotle's four, so, four parts of the soul, or actually three souls and one human soul. So the three souls, vegetative, sensible, reasonable, the human reasonable soul has two different capacities, the rational soul, which deals with abstract universals, pure math and so forth, and the practical reasoning, which is ethos or the domain of making good ethical decisions based on practice. All right, next time we'll get to the final one, and that's about war and some other fun things.